Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Popped Wheat. It's neat. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin'. The Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. Boy, oh boy, there's fun for your appetite every morning when you have Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice on your breakfast table. Reach for the big red and blue package and pour out those king-size choice premium grains, the one shot from guns. For a flavor treat every morning, help yourself to delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Red Stone was on trial for robbery in a California court. Red had been bitter against the world since boyhood, when he and his twin brother Jim had witnessed the death of their father, an innocent bystander, in a gunfight between outlaws and lawmen. The twins had stayed together until they were 16. Then Red had run away to make his fortune as a rancher. The ranch never materialized. Instead, Red had devoted his time to getting rich quick. Red had often wondered what had become of Jim. Robert Stone, rise and face the court. Hey, Stone, wake up. You daydreaming? Huh? The bailiff's called your name. He said to rise and face the court. Oh. Oh, sure. <laughs> Robert Stone, do you have anything to say before hearing your sentence? No, Your Honor. The court might be more lenient if you tell where you... Hid the loot from the Wells Fargo robbery? I... I have nothing to say. <clears throat> then I hereby sentence you to serve a term... Red listened to his sentence. Then the sheriff came forward to lead him from the courtroom. All right, sheriff, you got me. I'll get your pals too, Red. I'll find that loot. You stand a better chance of getting Bark and the boys than of finding the cash. Now let's go. The sooner I start serving this sentence, the sooner it'll be finished. Too bad it isn't longer, Stone. You should be put away for life. As Red Stone began his sentence to pay for breaking the law in California, his brother Jim was taking an oath to uphold the law in the Northwest. At police headquarters in Regina, Jim repeated the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. I, James Stone, solemnly swear that I will faithfully diligently and impartially execute and perform the duties required of me as a member of the Northwest Mounted Police Force and will well and truly obey... As a new recruit undergoing police education, Jim knew nothing of the messages sent by Wells Fargo detectives to the American authorities in Skagway and police officials in the Yukon Territory. Inspector Conrad notified all posts to be on the lookout for American currency with the serial numbers listed by Wells Fargo. Then the correspondence was placed in his file, where it remained until 1898. In February, the inspector had another letter from the detective assigned to the case. Sergeant Preston was in Conrad's office when the letter was opened. Neither of the two policemen connected the prisoner named Red Stone with Jim Stone, now a corporal on the force. Sergeant, this letter from Detective Chester will interest you. It concerns the unrecovered loot of a robbery in California. 
These serial numbers are familiar, sir. They were sent to us shortly after Red Stone went to prison. Detective Chester says that Stone is to be released in a few months. It's a curious case, Sergeant. Red Stone was a member of the Bach Bryan gang. So four men participated in the robbery. Red was the only one identified by witnesses. How soon after the robbery was he captured, sir? Too soon to have given him a chance to hide the stolen cash. Witnesses swear that he had been carrying the loot. They may have passed it on to one of the other members of the gang before the law closed in. The other three men had scattered to escape capture. Red Stone had made his way to the San Francisco docks where a friend of his, one of Soapy Smith's men, was waiting to board a steamer for Alaska. Detective Chester believed that Red Stone gave the loot to Smith's man, but not one of the stolen bills has been found. Detective Chester might learn a lot by following Stone after his release from prison. When Sergeant Preston left the inspector's office, he took with him a copy of the serial numbers, with instructions to post it once again in the customs house on the summit of Chilkoot Pass. Several months later, the quest for the money represented by those serial numbers brought Red Stone, Bach Bryan, Speed Wharton, and a man known as Cedar to Alaska. They had just stepped off the steamer, and they noticed a crowd of men gathered at the far end of the Skagway dock. Let's find out what's going on, Park. You do what you want to, Cedar. Red and I are going to look for Soapy Smith. He'll be easy to find. What Pete told me, Soapy has this town under his thumb. Hey, listen to Hey, what's the gunplay? It's on the end of the dock. Hey, Soapy's dead. What? Frank Reed got Soapy Smith. Oh, yes. Stand back. Frank's been hit. Yeah. Red, did you hear that? Yeah, someone said Soapy's been shot. I reckon this town didn't like being under Soapy's thumb. Come on, Bart. Maybe we'll find Pete at the 303. As soon as I get that Wells Fargo cash from him, we'll divvy it and head back to the States. After their leader was shot, the members of Soapy Smith's once powerful gang competed with each other to elude the wrath of the Vigilance Committee. The dealer at the 303 Gambling Palace directed Red and his friends to a shack at the end of town. There, the man named Pete interrupted his packing long enough to invite them inside. I'm sure glad to see you, Red. Come yeah, in. Sure. Come on, boys. Right. Right. Ah, looks like you're getting ready to travel, Pete. I am. Now the soapy's gone, those vigilant fellas will likely try to hang everybody who worked for them. Oh, these three are friends of mine, Pete. This is Bart Bryan. I've heard of you. That makes us even. This is Speed Wharton, and this is Cedar. All right. right. Now, we're here to collect the cash I asked you to keep for me. Uh, about that cash, Red. Yeah. When I got to town with it, I told Soapy about Pete, it. Pete, if you and Soapy double-crossed me... You know me, better than that, Red. And where is it? Well, it isn't in Skagway. What's what? that? Uh, savvy why we didn't keep it here, Red. You'd have to know what Skagway's been like. It's a wide-open town, and Soapy was the big boss. He needed a big gang to keep things running. What's that got to do with my cash? Plenty. We had to take in a lot of tin horns and hoodlums who couldn't be trusted. That's why Soapy and I decided the smartest thing to do with your cash would be to send it out of Alaska. Where is it? In the Yukon. Well, it's a good thing you're set to travel, Pete. You're coming with us. And if we don't find that money in the Yukon, I'll blow your head off. You're a local, Bach. I couldn't get into the Yukon. Why not? The mounted police are at the top of the pass. They know I work for Soapy. They'd never let me through. And how'll I get the money, Pete? Yeah. Soapy sent it out with a critter named Jersey. I have an envelope hidden behind a stone in the fireplace. Directions to find Jersey's place are inside it. Are you sure Jersey could be trusted, Pete? <laughs> He's too scared to try a double cross. Soapy had enough on him to hang him. Here's the envelope, Red. Yeah, thanks. Now, Jersey's orders are to keep the cash in a safe place till you call for it, Red. So if anything happens to you, your friends will not be able to get it. Why, you little... Now, hold it, Bark. Boys and I have a big share of that money coming to us. That's right, Bark. You and the boys helped get it, but I'm the one who took the rap for it. Soapy and Pete did me a favor, and I'm grateful. How do you know he's telling the truth? Because I say so. Are you and the boys coming with me, or do I go alone to get the cash? We'll go with you. We've come a long way to get our share, Red. And if we don't find it at the end of the trail, I'll make you pay for every mile we've traveled. Red and his friends bought provisions in Skagway, then began the long, hard trip on foot up the Chilkoot Trail. Sergeant Preston was on duty at the summit. Cedar and Speed passed them out his inspection. Bark Bryan was next. Bark Bryan, eh? That's my name. What's your business in the Yukon? I have no business. I came here to 
to look for gold. I hope you find it, Brian. Thanks. The constable ahead will inspect your gear and provision. Now, hold on. I want to wait for my partner. Your partner will join you. Move along. Seems to me you Mounties are mighty high handed Your name, please? Why, Sergeant Preston stared in surprise at the man who was next in line. The sergeant and Corporal Jim Stone were friends. The resemblance of the tall, red-headed prospector to the corporal was startling. My name's Stone. Robert Stone. Nickname Red? Hey. How did you know? Your hair. You ever been in prison? Yeah. Hurry up, Red. We're already through customs. You're traveling with Bark Brian? What about it? For a man who's paid his debt to the law, you're in bad company. Constable, detain this man. Preston signaled the constable to detain Red and his friends for a thorough inspection. In spite of the fact that each of them was carefully searched, none of the four carried any of the stolen money. As they traveled down the slope into Yukon Territory, Sergeant Preston decided to report their entrance to the inspector. When he went off duty, Preston sent a written report to Dawson. He also wrote several letters of inquiry addressed to law enforcement officials in the United States. Meanwhile, Red and his friends had made camp for the night. Hey, Red, how far do we have to travel to find a man named Jersey? Yeah, according to the directions, he has a place on Little Indian River. It's a long way from here, Cedar, but the loot will be worth the trip. I get back to the States with that money, I'm going to buy the fanciest gambling hall in Frisco. Yeah, you can have Frisco, Cedar. What do you do with your cash, Red? I'll go to Texas, buy a ranch. Ranch? What do you know about ranching, Fred? I've wanted to be a rancher ever since I was a kid. We'll raise horses and steers. We? Yeah, you and who else? A fellow named Jim. If I can find him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Today, fellas and girls, we have with us the Mask Marvel. Now, this man claims he can tell us what we are thinking about just by sounds. Are you ready, Mask Marvel? I am ready. Then, what does this sound reveal? It reveals you are thinking about the serials shot from guns. You're right. That sound stands for Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals, shot from guns. And what about this sound, Masked Marvel? Aha! <laughs> that sound means that choice premium grains of wheat and rice are exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. Correct. And that makes them bigger and better tasting. Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat are shot through and through with delicious nut-like flavor. But say, Mask Marvel, this sound may fool you. Listen. Mm, yes. <laughs> it means you just add milk or cream and fruit to wheat or rice shot from cotton. You're 100% right again, Mask Marvel. And I suppose if there was some kind of a sound that stood for good nourishment you'd know we meant that Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, fellas and girls, the nourishing breakfast cereal that's a delicious treat is Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. Shot from gun. Now to continue. Red and his friends turned in for the night. They were up at daybreak to continue their journey. In spite of their eagerness to reach Little Indian River, progress was slow. Two months after entering the country, they were many miles from their destination. As I figure it, we'll be there in another two weeks. Two and a half months from the time we left Skagway. What are you complaining about, Bark? We've sure waited a long time to get that loose. I've waited as long as you have. Most of my waiting was done behind bars. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and the great dog Yukon King had arrived at Fort Promise on Little Indian River, where they were warmly greeted by Corporal Jim Stone. Sergeant Preston and King. How are you, Jim? Oh, fine. I heard from headquarters that they are sending a man here, but I didn't expect you. We're a little ahead of schedule, Jim. Our orders are to help you move a shipment to Dawson as soon as the ice on the river thaws. I suppose you know what the shipment is. Why, uh, 
I know it's a valuable cargo that had been taken off a steamer that was trapped in the freeze-up on the Yukon. That's right, Sergeant. $50,000 in gold is stored here. I didn't know that, then. Few people do. That was the cargo taken from the mini Uh, What do you think of our post? Oh, nice. You probably want to make a thorough inspection. Later, Jim. Well, how about a cup of tea? It's strong and it's boiling hot. Fine. Oh, uh, by the way, Jim, do you have any relatives living in America? Not that I know of. I was born there. My father was killed when I was a kid. My brother and I went to England after his death. Your brother? My twin brother. I haven't seen him since I was 16. He left home to buy a ranch. Here you are, Sergeant. Thanks, Jim. Did your brother buy the ranch? I never knew. I never heard from him after he left. As Jim Stone told Sergeant Preston about his brother, he didn't know that Red was approaching Little Indian River. Nearly two weeks later, Red and his tired companions reached Jersey's shack concealed in the hills above the river. When Red told the ferret-faced little man why he was there, Jersey nodded and said, Yeah, Soapy and Pete gave me the cash and said to hide it in a safe place. So I buried it. Then we'll dig it up. Now, that might be a tough job because I buried it under the floor of a cabin a friend of mine had on the banks of the river. While my pal was away trapping, the mounted police took it over. Before I could get the cash, huh? they called the cabin post promise. You mean my cash is buried under a police post? Why, oh, wait, hold on, fellas. When I buried the cash, I didn't know the Mounties wanted a place for a lookout post. Why didn't you change the hiding place when you found out about the Mounties? I didn't have a chance. They moved right in. Red, I told you you'd pay for it if we didn't find that money at the end of the trail. Now, wait a minute, boss. Give him a chance. All right, Red. I'll wait a little longer, but not much longer. Oh, you're showing sense, boss. Jersey, how many Monty's are in the cabin? Uh, there are two of them now. Used to be just one. I haven't seen either of them close because I like to keep my distance from the law. Only two, huh? Well, that should be easy. Easy, huh? I reckon you haven't tangled with a Monty. Two of them can be just as tough as a whole regiment. I've seen the Monty's. A bullet will drop them just as fast as it'll drop a sheriff or a marshal or a deputy. If you won't take my word for it, Red, take Soapy's. Soapy's so powerful, there isn't a U.S. Marshal in Skagway who dares to cross him. They're all afraid of Soapy. But even Soapy stays away from the Mounties. And you'd be smart... Soapy's dead. What? And it wasn't a Mounties bullet that killed him. A fellow named Frank Reed shot him. So Soapy's dead? He's dead. And his gang is scattered. Now, come on, Jersey. Show me where Post Promise is. Yeah, sure. Sure thing. Well, I put on my pocket... There it is ahead. So that cabin is post promise. Yeah, huh? that's it. If you want to go any closer, you'll have to go alone. Why are you so afraid of the Marty? I've never had any trouble with him. And I don't want any. Well, I'm going to scout that place and figure how we can best get at it. Well, in that case, I'll go back to my shack and join your friends. You think you'll be able to find your way back? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sergeant Preston and King had been hunting game for food in the hills. Oh. They are returning to Post Promise when the Mountie caught sight of a man standing behind brush at the edge of a clearing, looking at the cabin. Preston and King followed Red as he moved from place to place, studying all approaches to Post Promise. <laughs> he's turned and coming this way. We'll soon know why he's prowling around the post. With the cargo from the Minnie Mae stored inside, he may be planning a robbery. There's something familiar about him. He... Wait... It's stone. Red stone. Hello. Hey, what the... There's no need for your gun. I just want to talk to you. Marty, huh? <coughs> What's wrong with your dog? I saw you reach for your gun. What brings you to Post Promise, Red? I... How do you know my name? You asked the same question on the summit of Chilkoot Pass. Oh, oh. Yeah, I... I remember you were at the customs house. That's right. You were traveling with a criminal named Bart Bryan. What about it? Are you scouting the post for him or yourself? What makes you think I've been scouting it? I've been watching you. You should have gone closer, Red. The corporal inside would be glad to see you. I'm a stranger here. The corporal wouldn't know me and I wouldn't know him. You're wrong, Red. Corporal Stone looks enough like you to be your twin brother. What? My twin brother? And you didn't know Jim was stationed here? Jim's a Mountie? Yes. A lawman, a policeman? That's right. He's inside that building. I'll take you to him if you like. No, no. Not now. Why not? Why, there's something I have to take care of first. 
Thanks. Thanks for telling me about... about Jim. <laughs> I think the game we shot to the post, King, and we'll come back here and follow Red. <laughs> You'll be able to get his scent, eh, boy? <laughs> Good dog. I have no trouble following his trail. If Red is traveling with Bark Brian and his pals, they may be planning to attack the post to steal the cargo from the Minnie May. <laughs> come on, boy, let's go. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and King returned to the place where they had met Red Stone. King knew the man's scent. He followed it. Red didn't know he was being trailed. He had found a shortcut through the hills that led him directly to the door of Jersey's two-room shack. His friends were finishing a meal Jersey had prepared for them. Well, Red, how's it look? Uh, we better not try to get the but cash. Not get it. After coming this far? Maybe you figure to get it all for yourself, Red, and not split with me and the boys. There's no way to get it without gunplay. There are only two Mounties in the post. We'll take them by surprise. We'll shoot them both. Get the cash and burn the place to the ground. No one will ever know what happened. You can't do it, Bark. I know. Look out, boss. He's reaching for his gun. Oh. <laughs> he sure quieted them. You stay quiet, too. Get your parker, Jersey. Yeah. What for? You're coming with us. You'll have to show us where you buried the cash. But Soapy said he'd kill me if I turned it over to anyone but Red. Soapy's I... dead. We'll kill you if you don't turn it over to us. All right, all right. What about Red? We'll put ropes on him. When we get back, we'll show him the loot. And maybe we'll give him a share of it. Bart Bryan and his friends have been gone only ten minutes when Sergeant Preston and King entered the cabin. They found Red tied hand and foot, still unconscious from the blow on the head. The body examined Red, then cut the ropes. He looked around the cabin. He saw the food on the table and counted four places. They haven't been gone long, King. The coffee's still warm. Strange we didn't meet them on our way here. Unless they went out the front way. I wonder if they are going to attack the post. Come on, King. We'll follow them and find out. Sergeant Preston and King went out the front door of Jersey's cabin and headed for the post. When he recovered consciousness, Red Stone struggled to his feet. He remembered the argument with Bark Bryan and being struck with a gun barrel. Oh, they're gone. Bark, Speed, Cedar, Jersey. You've gone to the post. Red remembered the shortcut he had taken from the post to the back door of the cabin. Yeah, I might be able to reach the post ahead of them. I go out the back way and take that shortcut. Red checked his gun and stuffed spare cartridges in his pocket. Then he went out the back door of the shack and hurried through the hills toward the river. The clearing that surrounded the post was just ahead. As he approached it, Red saw Bart Bryan and his three companions walking toward the small post. The four men were in the open. They'd have to run for cover. Mark! Cedar! Speed! Hey, what's this like Red? He's over there, behind those trees. Reach for your guns! When he heard the gunfire, Sergeant Preston broke into a run. He reached the clearing in time to see Bart Bryan sink to the ground. His three friends were already out of the fight. As Corporal Stone rushed from the post, Sergeant Preston saw another man staggering toward them. He recognized Red. Sergeant Preston, what happened? Take care of that man, Jim. I'll examine these four. All right. But what started the gunplay? Oh, uh, I started the gunplay, Jim. Red! Hello, Jim. Red, you, you're wounded. I, I gotta sit down. Here, lean on me. You must have taken a shortcut to get here ahead of me, Red. I did. You cut my ropes? Yes, you were unconscious when I was in the cabin. Yeah, they... They tied me so I couldn't interfere with it. the attack. I thought they were after the gold from the Minnie May. Well, all four of them are dead now. Yeah, they... They wanted the loot. What loot? Wells Fargo cash. It... It's buried under the post. There's a... There's a big reward for that cash, Jim. Easy, Red. Take it easy. No, no, you... You get the reward by... It. By that, that ranch. Uh, Sergeant Preston, he's is... lost consciousness. The wound in his shoulder isn't serious, Jim, but the other one is bad. A month later, Sergeant Preston, Corporal Stone, and his brother delivered the gold from the Minnie May, as well as the loot from the Wells Fargo robbery to headquarters in Dawson. Still weak after his ordeal at Post Promise, Red grinned crookedly at the two Mounties who came from Inspector Conrad's office. Well, Jim. Did the inspector say you get the reward for the Wells Fargo cash? Jim didn't claim the reward, Red. Why not? I don't want it. And you don't qualify it for us, you, you scoundrel. Oh, Jim, you you just were way a ranch. Let's start saving for that ranch all over again, Red. If you say so, Jim. Since you're a lawman, I 
I suppose I'll have to start the right way this time. The right way? Yeah. This time I'll start on your side of the law. Come on, King. We'll go get our next assignment now that this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here comes the favorite, the winner by a mile. And here it is, the breakfast cereal that wins with your family's taste morning after morning, delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. They're in first place with mother because they're quick, ready to serve, save time in the morning. They're the winner with the youngsters because they're the ones shot from gun, actually exploded up to eight times normal size, to make them extra crisp and tender. And Dad picks Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat because you can sweeten them or not to suit your own special taste. There's nothing that can beat the toasty, nut-like flavor of the good natural grain, the sun-ripened flavor that old Mother Nature put into it. And think of the nourishment your family can cash in on. In every bowlful, there are extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Top with milk or thick, rich cream, add fruit. And there's a deluxe family breakfast that's really economical. Remember, the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice come only in the big red and blue packages with a sealed inner lining so they're crisp as can be. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, some time ago you arrested a man named Chris James. Yes, sir, I remember. He and his partner, Joe, went to jail for robbery. That's right. They served their terms, they were released. Now they're back at the old game. Another robbery? This time it is robbery and murder. Find them. Yes, sir. But remember, Sergeant, they know that they can be hanged only once. They'll kill to avoid capture. Sergeant Preston was prepared for a showdown if and when he found the killers. But he didn't suspect that they would try to murder him by proxy, by using a man with the strength of a gorilla and the mind of a child. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Only Quaker Paco 10 has wheat and rice shot from guns. That's Quaker Paco 10, a regular cereal pantry. Six different delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Ten crisp, fresh individual servings. At breakfast, you can take your pick of the pack. Have your own separate individual package. Enjoy a different cereal, extra fresh every morning. Just remember, only Quaker Paco 10 has all your family's cereal favorites. Try Quaker Paco 10. You'll be glad you did. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. Listen tomorrow at this same time to the Green Hornet, brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again, delicious Orange Crush. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>